the rest of the story. Fayetteville, North Carolina may be the city you've always dreamed of calling home. I love that town, 60,000 or so friendly neighbors at the headwaters of the Cape Fear River, only 50 miles south of the state capital. It is not the sort of place you'd expect to encounter crime, but one morning Clark Dill heard from the city's director of administrative services. Clark, by the way, is Fayetteville's director of sanitation. And he was informed that there was a problem in the sanitation office, that somebody was making unauthorized third-party phone calls from sanitation headquarters, and the city was having to pay the bill. All of this over a couple of phone calls, Clark wondered, but then he learned that more than a hundred unauthorized phone calls had been made from the sanitation office. Well, Clark said he'd get right on it, never guessing the rest of the story. He asked sanitation employees, all of them pleaded innocent, he called the phone company. Yes, sir, Mr. Dill, we have those records. Well, did you see them right away? How many phone calls were made from the office, Clark asked. Over a hundred, said the phone company person, and something else, all of the calls were made in the middle of the night. Well, now Clark's palms got sweaty. The sanitation offices were locked up tight, tight as a trash compactor after working hours. Over a hundred phone calls in the middle of the night was inconceivable. Clark went back to his employees. Anything missing from the office? Any files or locked desk drawers prior to open? No, everything in order. So somebody broke into the sanitation office after dark and made a hundred phone calls? It just didn't make sense. Clark called the phone company again. Could those calls have been made by some misguided computer whiz teenager with a modem? You know, hit a few keys at home and the Department of Sanitation pays your phone bill. The calls were made from your office, Mr. Dill, from two phone lines inside your office. Well, Clark hung up, and then he realized when those phone company records arrived, the phone numbers called would also be listed. So the records arrived, and there they were, more than 100 telephone calls, and all of them to the same number. Well, naturally, Clark Dill called that number. It was another office, an office that was also closed at night. It was the home office of the Coca-Cola Company. Have you figured out who the night caller was? <laughs> well, the phone calls were made to the Coca-Cola Company computer. That's the computer you call when you have run out of Coca-Cola and you need some more. But on the night in question, for some reason, the Coca-Cola Company's home office computer did not respond properly to the request for more Coke. On that one particular night, the Coca-Cola Company home office computer did not respond promptly and properly. And so, lonely and empty, Fayetteville Department of Sanitation Coke machine the computerized Coke machine kept calling the Coca-Cola home office and kept calling and kept calling and kept calling all night long. And now you know the rest of the story.